back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Holly Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5 right here live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So happy you have joined us today. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a whole lot more. Well, let's go to the IVOrganics.com hotline and bring our next guest in from Sacramento, California, Holly. Pam from BrownThumbMama.com is a blogger, author, busy mom, and advocate for healthy, natural living. On her blog she started in 2009, there are great recipes, gardening tips, money-saving ideas, and more. Welcome to the program, Pam. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Well, thank you for getting up early over on the Pacific Coast to be with us and our listeners. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we want to start out with, we had a question call in last week on the IVOrganics.com hotline about how to keep cats out of the garden. Now, I gave my answer, and I want to ask you, you've got a great article on your blog about keeping cats out of your garden, whether they're yours or not yours. What are some of your techniques into keeping these cats from using your garden as a litter box? Good question. So we don't have any cats ourselves, but our neighbors do. They have a free-ranging kitties, and... There are lots of different things that you can try, and we've tried them all because there's nothing worse in your vegetable garden than a present from the neighbor cat. So um, there are ultrasonic uh, gizmos that shoot water. There's um, You can put orange peels. I guess the kitties don't like the smell of citrus. Um, there you can use rosemary essential oil or rosemary branches from your plants. Um, the thing that I've found to be the most effective, quite frankly, in our raised bed gardens is to just lay some pig fencing over the top so, or some sort of mesh or a physical barrier so that they can't, if they can't get into the raised bed, they can't leave you any presents and it keeps the squirrels out too. Oh, there you go. Now, so you mentioned um, on your blog some natural cleaning tips like killing germs without bleach. What are some great natural uh, germ killing tips and cleaning tips, uh, especially without bleach these days? I was very surprised to find that there were ways that you could kill germs without bleach. Um, And this is the craziest thing because I'll bet you anything, you already have this in your cupboard. The the way to kill germs without using bleach is a two-step process. You're going to use vinegar and hydrogen peroxide of all the crazy things. So first, you'll spray it just plain white vinegar. Doesn't even have to be um, doesn't even have to be the, the fancy good stuff. Spray the white vinegar like on your kitchen counter. Let it dry or let it sit there for at least a few minutes, and then you're going to spray the hydrogen peroxide over the top. And those two chemicals combine on contact. To make a a germ-killing chemical, it's the same stuff that they use at restaurants, but they use it at a much stronger concentration. The crazy thing is you can't combine them in a bottle because then they become inert. It has to happen. um, You have to layer them. It can't be stored. It has to be layered um, out there on your counter. So, yeah, we use that um, in the bathtub. If one of the kids has a, uh, an incident um, in the kitchen, that kind of thing. So we definitely gets in use a lot. We just keep a spray bottle. We keep a spare bottle of vinegar and a spare bottle of uh, hydrogen peroxide under the kitchen sink with a spray lid already attached. Okay. So with that being said, many people might want to know, why, why not use bleach? Why are we avoiding using the bleach? Well, we have two little kids, so I am not a fan of bleach because, well, because of laundry mishaps, because you can get chemical burns from it. Um, We don't have any clothes that can be, um, we don't have anything that has that need to be super duper white. I mean, if if I had clothes that needed to be a bright white, I would line dry them because that helps um, brighten them up and then they smell fantastic. So for us, it's definitely a safety concern. Um, I don't want bleach residue on things and I can do all of the cleaning and disinfecting that I need to do with natural stuff. 
And with the hydrogen peroxide, uh, lastly, with, when you attach the spray bottle, you can just use it from the store-bought bottle. You don't want to pour that into another bottle, or do you, or how does that work? I leave it in the store-bought bottle because it's, it's darker, and you don't, you don't want hydrogen peroxide in a clear bottle, or it will degrade. So I just, um, we have a, a Costco by us, and that everything comes in a two-pack or a 900-pack, so... <laughs> We have an extra bottle, and I just have an extra spray lid that I recycled from something else, and zoop, there you go. Absolutely. Well, let's head to the garden here. We've never practiced this particular method, but you've got an article on the blog about cover cropping. Now, one, what is cover cropping? And two, what are the benefits of cover cropping versus just getting another bag of organic fertilizer and putting it in the garden bed? Sure. Okay. So I primarily have raised beds, especially um, I have some garden in my front yard but most of my backyard is raised beds and I have one of them has been planted in for several years and for what I thought at the time it was a strange reason all of a sudden that bed was not producing well and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what I hadn't done anything differently and then I realized I had been planting in that bed for several years and the soil was exhausted it was the plants need minerals and different nutrients from the soil and I had not been replenishing it you know I'd maybe throw in some compost from my compost bin um, but I hadn't been replenishing the soil effectively so and I started doing some reading and talking to our master gardeners I decided it was time to try a cover crop and what that means is you plant a beneficial but expendable crop in the garden. And there are certain, you wouldn't plant, um, you, you want to plant something that has good nutrients. So you're not going to, you know, let the thistles grow or something weird like that. Um, I chose to plant red clover. Um, it helps. So you, you plant it, you let it grow, but you don't let it go to seed if you can help it. You cut it down while it's still green and you till it into the soil. And what this does is it, of course, as the plants decompose, it gives extra nutrients to the soil. They can, the roots will go into the soil and loosen it. There will be um, insects. It helps grow the soil food web. Have, um, it prevents erosion and a raised bed. That's not always a big concern but it provides so much more. It is, it is the way that nature has always worked, and it's more in harmony with nature than throwing in some chemicals or even grabbing another bag of, um, of fertilizer at the garden center. Okay, makes sense. Right, definitely. So what are some natural ways to get rid of bad bugs in your garden? Oh, so many bugs. Uh, so, <laughs> bugs are the worst. I've been doing war, uh, war against aphids since I think since I planted my first watermelon plant when we moved in. Um, so for us, so aphids are a killer for us, um, and of course you spray them off with water. Um, we can buy ladybugs at the garden center. That's super fun with kids. Um, buy a bag of ladybugs, let them go at dusk, and um, the, our aphid infestation one year was so bad, but the ladybugs were just as happy as all get out because they thought they'd landed at the world's best buffet. Um, so the kids got a really big kick out of that. Um, tomato worms are absolutely awful, and if you can find them on your tomato plants, you kind of have to sit there and study every branch for a while. Uh, you pick them suckers off and feed them to the chickens. So that would be, or or squish them. The kids like to squish them. <laughs> um, for, we have a big strawberry patch, and so we have snails and slugs. Um, with the kids around, I don't want to put snail bait out, or, um, or even with the neighbor's kitty, I don't want to put snail bait out. And so there's a, a few things that we've done. Um, the secret weapon for snails and slugs is, is to get the kids out there in, after dark because it's probably past their bedtime and they're tickled to death to be up and doing stuff. So they can be your snail hunters and, um, and pick, them, you know, pick them up and squish them. Um, I have also seen 
some folks have had good luck with uh, sinking a like an empty tuna fish can, uh, sink it into the ground a little bit and put a tiny bit of beer in the bottom. For whatever reason, the snails and slugs are attracted to that, and then they fall in to get a drink and they can't get out. So snails, they go in, they go in, they get schnuckered, and then they're stuck in the in the tuna can, and you can dispose of them the next day. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, uh, natural weed killers. You, we can use this glycosine stuff. You get the store, and, and you you know it's not good for you because it burns your lungs, or you just don't. You know, what what are what are some ways you found that work that can eliminate weeds, whether in your garden or in your flower patch or just places in your gar- in your yard. You just don't want specific types of weeds. So that one weed killer weed killing can be tricky because. Whether it's chemical or it's natural, you um, the 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 stuff you're spraying doesn't know which ones are your strawberries and which ones are the weeds. So obviously, the the best way is to going to be to go through and pull them out by hand. But when you have uh, a, like a maybe a big area, or if it's in between your raised beds and you just can't even imagine pulling out another piece of nut grass. Um, the the best thing that I found is a um, a mixture home homegrown mixture, um, two cups of white vinegar, a tablespoon of salt, and a teaspoon or so of dish soap, and you mix those up together, and um, spray it on whatever weed you have. Now remember, it's gonna it's gonna kill whatever it touches. Whatever it touches. So don't don't spray, you know, grandma's gladiola or something something important because the, the spray doesn't know the difference. But but spray the goodness out of whatever weeds you have and um, they will it takes a little bit of time but they will dry up and, and then you can um, It'll, they'll dry up and you can pull them out or just till them under and they'll be all right. There you go. So with one, before we let you go, we want to ask you about... Where can people find you and all your great information and find your book? Absolutely. So I am on the web at brownthumbmama.com, B-R-O-W-N-T-H-U-M-B-M-A-M-A. Um, uh, all the usual suspects, Facebook, Pinterest, etc. And so you can find my, um, my book on my website, on Amazon as well, all kinds of, all, all over the place. Well, Pam, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day there in Sacramento to join Holly, myself, and our listeners in sharing some of your garden and a home uh, remedy knowledge with all of us. Thanks. I'm tickled to be here. Thank you, Pam. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.